go live, uh, everybody. It's episode 60 of Kamloops last week. 60. 60. Last night, Aaron Judge hit his 60th home run for the New York Yankees, and he's one shy of Roger Maris's record. And um, it's, uh, it's a much better record than the tainted National League, even though National League's a better league. It was until uh, Manfred screwed up all the rules and brought in the universal DH. Anyway, the um, uh, 60, that's, uh, that's the, uh, it's a very, very big number this week because it's, um, it's, it's tied into a really, really incredible uh, feat for the Aaron Judge. What a, what a year. You always go back to baseball in these things. You are basically like an encyclopedia of baseball. No, I like baseball. It goes football, baseball, hockey. In my, in my, it's changed. As you get older, you like the slower games, the thinking games. It's also the last full day of summer, um, 21st of September. 60 is a big number. You're getting close to that number. I am. We'll get there in a second. Your birthday's coming up. Yes, but it is. First, let's intro the show. Ray Dollywall, hot seat. He's running for mayor. He'll be right here with us. Tom Glard, he owns the camera. Kamloops Blazers, big Friday coming up for the Kamloops Blazers. Their season begins. They're hosting the Cup this season. Uh, he owns the Dallas Stars. He owns a lot of things. He, yes, he owns Moxies. Uh, Sandman in, set in uh, Moxies, uh, the Shark Club, um, all sorts of things. Yeah. Colt Miko owns the BCFC, what a, leading the league. What a game. What a, what a season for this kid. West Side, right? West Side. Yeah. He's 17 years old, and he's leading the league in receiving. That uh, You can be 22 and play in that yeah. league. He's from Kamloops. Cool story. We'll hear from him. <laughs> Let's get back to the birthday stuff here. This photo, just set the scene what was going oh, on this here. thing this was on facebook recently i think yeah that's the uh, that's abbey rules baby what like what year what circuit oh what i don't know this is like uh er early 20s so this would be like uh in the 80s Abbotsford? 80s, 90s yeah the Abbotsford, that's me right there that's my brother shane the big head that's <laughs> daryl my other brother and we're with uh, Scott Gumbert. Who's Pipes here? And there's Scott uh, Gibson. And uh, the Pipes, yeah, that's Danny Schneider. That's his <laughs> sister, Helen. And the brother, uh, where's Brian? Brian James Ahern. He played junior football in Northern California. And uh, they're good family friends. And that's, that's a typical party in Abbotsford before all the social media and the phones crap. Mm -hmm. We talked and we sat, talked around and we drank a lot of beer. I think we were, see, we're drinking, what is that? It looks like almost, oh, it's draft. Oh, oh that's genuine draft. Genuine yeah, draft. Yeah, genuine draft. Remember that? Those, look at all the denim. That's yeah. Abbey Rules, baby. Budweiser. <laughs> That's the Abbey tuxedo version. Oh, yeah, right that's the you got to tuck it in. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're not an Abbey, baby. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so maybe birthday. that was a birthday party. Yours coming out. You're 55 yeah. on, on Monday. I'm right? 54. On you're Monday. going to be. You're 54? Yeah, I'm going to be 50. Well, I look that old. Well, okay, how does it feel? It feels, I feel young. I'm playing pickleball tonight. I worked last night as usual, interviewing <laughs> David Eby. Um, I feel good. I, uh, I like my wine. I like. Uh, I joined a curling league. I'm, joined, I'm playing curling every Tuesday this year. And when I feel he does this, he's holding up the whole company. Like Atlas. I'm holding up the world. That's right. Uh, yeah. David Eby, he's a tall drink of water, eh? Six foot seven, man. I'm oh, looking yeah. up at him a little time. What did you pull out of that? Oh, he's talking about the, today we're going to release the prolific offenders report he talked about. He's running for the leadership, so he's talking about health care and all this other stuff. Anyway, um, it feels good. I feel, I feel pretty good. Um, I had a Colorado last year. Remember, I, I yeah, showed you a photo of it. Uh, yeah, and um, so far, so I good. You, up from the, uh, you did. I was kind of woozy. Yeah, I was kind of woozy. Yeah, the doctor gave me a picture, you know, of, of the inside. It, it's not gross. It looks like a wormhole. Very clean. Well, very clean. clean. Should be part I, of the I can never forget that picture. It's, good. it's yes. in my mind. It's, 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 it's very, one. very yeah. pretty. I'm doing my part for public health. You got it. I don't even know where to start with this one here, but last night I had to send that picture to myself, and the subject line as I was typing, I couldn't believe I was typing it, was folds as colon. Oh, most aren't as pretty as mine. <laughs> it's clean, it's smooth, it's pink. Greg, the engineer, get your colonoscopy. You gotta, you gotta get yourself clean. So I feel pretty good. Okay, so I, you mentioned, this is Shane here, big That's, that's uh, Sugar Shane, my brother in North Van. That's Daryl, my brother, he also lives in North Van. What does he do for a living? Shane's, uh, uh, he's a dental, so we call him the tooth, tooth, tooth floss king. Uh, the tooth, uh, the, <laughs> the floss king. Floss king. Yeah, the, uh, he's, uh, he sells dental supply equipment to dentists around the Lower Mainland for Sinclair Dental. He started as a $7 an hour guy on the loading dock, mm -hmm. and now he makes uh, a very good living doing it. And you call him Big Head because? Well, he's got a, he's got a larger than normal head, but it's also an attitude. He does Big Head things through his life that don't make any sense. He'll go into like Baskin and Robbins, 31 flavors and order vanilla, right? That's, that's a Big Head thing, right? So yeah. Okay, yeah. well I contacted both of these uh, men, and I got them to send you a little message here, and I'll, I'll play it, and you can just see, and then maybe you can react. Uh, there's a few stories that they bring up that maybe you want to expand on, so you can uh, have a look at this. As you can see, we're on a green screen, and what we're doing is I'm in a green suit, and they're going to make me a little less attractive uh, so we don't distract from the birthday boy. So we'll take care of that in post, take a couple hours. 
Anyway, uh, three of the stories I was thinking about, one of them was you bringing your high school annual to the liquor store. That was pretty good. Uh, the guy jumping through the car window after a late night out. That was something. And uh, the early morning phone call from Matt Dunnigan. You might want to elaborate on those stories. But those were the three I was thinking about. And I uh, uh, just want to say I love you. Happy birthday. We'll see you soon. And your show is great. Marty, Mike, everybody there is just awesome. I watch all the shows and the guests are great. And uh, keep it up, guys. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Take care. Happy birthday, brother. Love you. Baldy, get back to work. Gotta go. Oh, yeah. Mary, thank you. Yeah, you can have that back. And just let the patient know we'll see him in six weeks, okay? Hey, Chris. It's Dr. Bulge, the little brother calling. Wanted to wish you a happy birthday and let you know that we love you. Uh, even though you're not, uh, you know, a doctor like me or a movie star like your brother Daryl, you turned out all right. You're running that little newspaper up north and co-hosting this uh, podcast with Marty, who clearly carries the show. But besides that, we're proud of you. For one of the smartest guys I know, you have made some questionable decisions in life that make me question your intelligence. But, um, you know, like that tattoo on your shoulder... And, um, you know, those 16 weeks you spent at boot camp when you were 15 years old for that bad decision you made with those guys you used to run with, you might want to tell that story. But besides that, we love you. We know you're a very intelligent guy now, and we hope you have a great birthday. So uh, I got to get back to the next patient, but uh, we'll see you see real soon. Love you, brother. There you go. <laughs> well, what do you make of that? That's funny. That's pretty funny. That's good. I had no idea you were going to do that. Yeah. No. So That's there's good. a bunch of stories there. Maybe we can just, you can tell one of them. I love the Matt Dunnigan story, but I don't know if you want to tell that one. Yeah, Matt What's Dunn the high school annual? Well, I, I moved up to Edmonton when I was 18, and you had, had to go, uh, 18, you can go to the, I, I lived with my brother Daryl and his girlfriend there in an apartment, and 18 was the drinking age there, 19 here, and uh, <laughs> and I, I got there like a week after my birthday, and I didn't have any ID, because I didn't drive, I didn't, I didn't drive till I was 23, 24, so I didn't have a license, I had nothing, so I, I, I was waiting for my Alberta ID to come in the mail, and and um, I wanted to go to this pub, so um, they wouldn't let me in, so they go, do you have anything proving your, <laughs> so I, we zip back home, I get my high school annual because I carry these boxes of ephemera everywhere and I open it up and I show them <laughs> did it work <laughs> they let me in we went in and uh, the annual got me why didn't you drive to your 23 I didn't need to drive I lived in North Van I lived in uh, I lived in Edmonton I went to college in Edmonton took the bus so I didn't learn to drive till I was 23 yeah. can we do Matt Dunnigan's story yeah real quick well, same, same thing in Edmonton I, I'm a big BC Lions fan and I used to write letters to the Edmonton newspaper I, I, I got them all still they used to publish them all and um, there's just mocking Edmonton the Oilers the Eskimos the weather I remember one time I wrote a letter. It was October 12, 1987. I, it was like Vancouver Canucks 6, Edmonton Oilers 5, BC Lions 34, <laughs> Edmonton Eskimos 12, and then Vancouver 13 degrees Celsius, Edmonton 12 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And they were just, people got so mad at me. Anyway, Dunnigan uh, <laughs> shit the bed in the 86 Great Cup and they lose, uh, D Damon Allen, they lose the Great Cup to Hamilton. It was a big upset. I was really happy because the week before Edmonton beat BC in the final, I was really pissed off as living in Edmonton. Um, I'm really happy they, they lost. I write a letter to the editor uh, saying, you know, Dunnigan's in idiot. It was a well-crafted letter, and I, and, I, and, I, and I actually went down there on a Sunday to 50th Street and dropped it in the mailbox <laughs> of, the, of the Edmonton Sun, and so it was, I put it on the Sunday. It was in the next morning's newspaper. Yeah. However, no one would have known because my I, my I, my number's not in the paper. So it's, it's my brother's girlfriend's number, Carol McNeil. So, anyway, someone in the paper had to tip him off because I dropped it off Sunday after after the West after the Great Cup. Monday morning, about four in the morning, I get a phone call. Yeah, my brother, brother answered the phone because I was staying with him and his girlfriend. And he knocks on my door and it's like four in the morning. He goes, hey, something's on the phone for you. So he goes to the, I pick up the phone in the room. He's on the other line. And I hear this noise in the background. It goes, Christopher Folds. I'm like, yeah. He goes, this is Matt Dunnigan. F off. And I'm, just, and I'm like, so Daryl runs back to the room. He's like, and we live in this ground floor, real good, dumpy apartment in Duggan, which is in South Edmonton. And I spent the rest of three or four hours thinking that drunken Eskimos are going to be breaking my window and beating me up, eh? And um, so someone tipped them off because my number was on the... On Matt the, Dunnigan! <laughs> my number, you have to put your phone number on the handwritten letter that you dropped off. So Dunnigan told me to F off at four in the morning after he lost the Great Cup, so yeah. That's well, a good one. That's a good story. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on here. And Mike, you're involved here, and we do this every single year, uh, all three of us. We've done this every year since we've known each other. For the rest of the time, we're going to do it. We always go on a trip. 
around this time of year, don't we? Uh, where did we go most recently? Well, you know, it's the fall season, and uh, we're better to go than to uh, Adams River and uh, and walk in that area, which is, uh, you know, just beautiful, the crisp air at this time of year. And, uh, I, of course, I love my, my stops at McDonald's to get my cup of coffee on the way. But um, I yeah. just thought, uh, it's funny you mentioned that. I remember seeing that river, and down the river floated a mattress. Yes, right. Yeah. It was and bizarre. It was just, it wasn't even soaked up in water. It was so well crafted. It was, it was floating like it, like, it, like it was really, really um, buoyant. Yes. Going down the river there. It, yeah. it must have been. A river raft. A Sealy mattress. It must yeah, have been a Sealy mattress Sealy, yes. from Gord's Appliance and Mattress right, Center. Yes, I remember that, yeah. And we had, we forgot to bring food, didn't we? We forgot to bring food. So we had to go mm. and we went to a nearby farm in Hefley and we stole the produce that normally goes to. Yeah, to New Leaf Market there. Yeah, I remember we had, uh, we had some uh, rutabagas and we had some uh, turnips and we had some uh, tomatoes and we had a nice little picnic there. Yeah, amidst all the dying fish, it was kind of good. Yeah. Well, the interesting part was you were the only one, Chris, that knew how to spell rut rutabagas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and also, I think those dying fish, Herman and, and uh, Gorge Stevens, are coming up with a plan to save the fisheries yes these guys right. they do everything. They do everything yes that's right so make sure you check uh, mcdonald's out and we drink exclusively mcdonald's coffee right ba, 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 ba. beautiful and gourds appliance and mattress center the gourds giving back program they're donating an appliance or appliances to someone in need every single month like every month so apply online at gourdscantaloupes.ca when we come back it's ray dollywall and last week this week but first a word from gourds appliance and mattress center don't want the nine-hour cycle, please! Freaking $500 hydro bill piece of trash. Yeah. I need to speak to Gord on the Niner! Hey, no, I'm actually Steve, the new owner. First things first, pal, you should probably update your sign. Number two, my dishwasher is mangled, tangled again. The nine-hour cycle, hydro bill through the roof. You guys don't fix appliances, I know that, so I need a new one. We actually do fix appliances, but if you want, I can try some new ones first and have a look. You got a price in mind? Money is not an obstacle for me. <laughs> Money's definitely an obstacle. He's the cheapest guy in Kamloops. Ain't that right, Darby? <laughs> well, this here is going to be your Cadillac model, top of the line. This is our middle of the road dishwasher. Just a great dishwasher at a great price. This is our budget friendly model. Still a great dishwasher. Just at a bit of a lower price. Price doesn't work for me. Let's see if we can fix mine at home. Alrighty then. There you go. Seems to be good. How's the fridge working? The fridge is fine, Gord. It's Steve. Ray Dollywell, thanks for joining us today on the show, Kamloops Last Week. Folsey, why don't you uh, give us some background on Ray and then we'll <coughs> ask some questions. Ray Dollywell is one of five people running for mayor of Kamloops in the October 15th civic election, and he's uh, He's one of three on, on, on the candidate list with experience at city council. Ray ran for council in 2017 by-election. There was 21 people vying for two empty seats, and Ray and Kathy Sinclair got those two seats. So Ray spent a year in council, so he's, he knows what, what's, what's going on there, and, and now he's uh, aiming for the top job. Okay. Correct, yeah. In 2018, I ran, but uh, unsuccessfully. I had a new business that I just bought at the same time I got elected the first time, so basically I had to step back a little bit. You were on, on the bubble, though. You were like ninth, uh, yeah. like, uh, with, eight, the top eight got in, right? With a $40 spend, I, uh, that's right. I almost got in. You I almost thought got in, yeah. the, If the people wanted to get me in, they would, they almost did. So. Yeah, that's right. But I'm here, ready to serve my, my city in a different capacity now and uh, ready to go. I've got great staff at the shop, so... I'm ready to step back from uh, from the locksmithing field and into this uh, different role in the city that I can hopefully do some more for my citizens of the city. So. Okay, tell 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 the viewers and you you told me before this and you you told us in, in the in the newspaper why are you running? Why do you want to be mayor? Well, um, when I was in there in 2017, it was uh, not a very good scene in there. They uh, I was bullied and harassed by some of the members of staff and even council too at some of the events we went to. So. This time I want to go back not as a councillor because I do not want what happened to me uh, to happen to any other councillor. So as, as a mayor, I think I have lots to give, a different perspective in City Hall as well. I'm a blue collar guy and, uh, and uh, to, to bring, to, just to bring a different perspective to City Hall. We never had that for a while. It's always been the white collar. So bring, bring it back to the working people. What type of bullying? Um, I ran the first time because I've, I'm president of the Multicultural Society, have been for 15 years, and 
every year I've fought with the city the night before regarding the, the food, which our vendors have done for 45 years. So uh, this last time with the by-election coming up, I thought I'll try and see if I can get in there because I don't think council knows what staff is doing out there, and which they didn't, and I got in. So my family's been here in Camelot for over 100 years, so that helped get me in as well. We're pretty well, pretty well established. Our roots are deep in this community. You mentioned bullying and intimidation uh, by staff and other council members, and you're not the only person to bring that issue up. Sadie Hunter, a fellow mayoral candidate, and she's, uh, she's, on, she's on council right now, when, her, when she was announcing she was running for mayor, she mentioned that she had been, um, I think, bullied, and we asked her to specify, you know, are you talking from inside City Hall or from the, from the public? She said a bit of both, but she didn't go into detail as to what it was. What's the culture like there? I mean, uh, are you talking like, verbally threatened or just treated treated poorly? Treated in what they did. Uh, right away, as soon as I got in, within the first meeting or two, there was an amendment put to our service agreement for the Council Multicultural Society for Canada Day. I put an email out how deceitful, dishonest, sneaking, underhanded, and I was being attacked from, uh, it was a personal attack on me from a staffer to a counsellor. Mm. And uh, so it, it did come through. David Trowan read it off and and all of the councillors voted for that amendment to the service agreement, which stated if we don't cooperate with them, they'll pull our funding. If we don't give them 2,000 for fireworks, they'll pull our funding, which mm -hmm. we've always given three to 4,000. But, but dealing with uh, some of the senior management was, it, when I started it was great, but then it just seemed to go sideways. And some of them in there for just, just to bully people, and that's, huh. and that's what they do. I've heard that from a lot of people, from the same people that, uh, that I had to deal with as well. And, as well as some venues I went to, I think it was Pacific Sports, and one of the counselors, she sat beside me, you can figure out who that was, uh, made a comment about, uh, you know, my, I'm not that tall, so she made this comment and the whole event went dead. I mean, this was Pacific Sports and there was people from all over, sponsors and everything, and uh, a lot of people came up to me after and that uh, just sort of... Oh. And Mayor Christian should have dealt with that. He was aware of it, and when a, one councillor does that to another one, they're supposed to get reprimanded. So, so that's maybe the reason the, f the fiery ray that I talked to on election night in the 17 at the Brock Shopping Centre at the yes. big party yes. became silent ray because great. you were kind of shell-shocked, I guess. There. Well, they were trying to put me in my place and not knowing uh, what I was doing the first go-around. I didn't know when to speak, and I had no help at all. Uh, where Sadie had uh, quite a bit, she had a lot of push from Arjun. Mm -hmm. Arjun's wife was her campaign manager, then her financial agent, and mm -hmm. people were pushing her in there. But okay. but I was not very well received, and then that's okay. That's why I like to go in there and uh, stir the pot. All right. Okay. So uh, what, what's the number one issue for you? Safety and security. We deal with that every day. Um, I was out last night doing a call at 1:30 this morning again. Um, Citizens are camels. The mental health of our regular citizens is is in jeopardy as well. So, with all the break-ins, the crime, the drugs, uh, people on the streets, I need to address that first and foremost. That's there's a lot there, but can you give us some specifics on what you will do? We need to move uh, these people off of our main central business district. They shouldn't be there. Uh, it's creating havoc in our business community. They can't open up their doors. Uh, they have a right to live. They have a right to live here. A lot of them are housed, but they can't do their drugs and uh, alcohol on their properties where they live. So then they go to city property and we allow them, even though it's against our bylaws, to let them do that. So our bylaw department is in shambles. Um, I've just heard that, uh, that uh, some information came to me last night as well. The Human Rights Tribunal that, uh, that was going through, that's been settled in closed doors as well and I know the fellow that uh, that initiated that as well but I won't speak to that today. You're talking about the the, the challenge to the ch change from bylaws to community services officer that was going to uh, arbitration. Correct yeah right. and that, the arbitration is coming up this was another human rights tribunal with the same office of the um, well, with respect, with respect services. to an employee complaint. Correct yeah, yes okay. and bullying and harassment harassment again so. Like Spina's son went through that. That's uh, the, the late March Spina's son went through that. And, correct uh, yeah, yeah. and okay. that's I, now that you brought his name up, that's who it was. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's been said. Okay. Because at first, that yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then as far as the uh, the um, arbitration coming up, that's just coming up now, and I believe the city will lose it. And it, I believe I've heard the two million dollar park it's cost in the city. Well, it's supposed to be in October, right? Cur uh, September it was, okay. and I think it's coming up this week or next week. Okay. That's a big story there. Yeah. What's, what separates you most from the other people who are running? Well, I think I can uh, relate to the regular people of the city, and that's who I'm appealing to. I'm appealing to the working class, business class. I, I live it. I uh, breathe it. 
Um, I know the problems that are out there. We deal with the crime and the homelessness, homelessness daily in our business. So I think we're pretty well uh, at the top of the, the, the chain when it comes to knowing what's going on with this stuff. And, and stuff that doesn't get reported. You guys don't see what goes on all the time, but there is there is more stuff that um, that nobody knows about. So I think I think I have a pretty good perspective on that. And and with the uh, service providers too, with the CMHA and these guys, we need to support them more. Sure, they're everybody's attacking them for the um, homeless people being outside of their venues creating havoc. But we as a city need to get our bylaws under control. We don't have any services at all, and that that's why everything has gone awry. When you ran in 2017 during the campaign, uh, one of your most memorable quotes was, "We need uh, we need more police downtown. Uh, uh, crime is up, and people." You said people don't feel safe in their own city. That was your quote, and that's six years ago. Yes, and nothing's changed. It's gotten worse. Uh, I remember that. Even before I, uh, I ran, I uh, talked to a lot of business people downtown, the ladies especially, trying to walk to their cars. They felt unsafe at that time. So. So it started before COVID. Everybody said it was COVID, but it wasn't. It started way before that. I would be getting calls from 5 o'clock in the evening till 5 in the morning. So anytime I could get some sleep, I would do that in between. Um, but the crime started escalating probably about 2018. 2017, I think, was a low year as far as our crime in our city. And then after that, 2018, it just slowly escalated. This also coincides with a lot of people came from outside after the fires and maybe never went home, right? Correct. The evacuation in 17. Okay, so yeah. we, we know that the number one issue that you and almost every single other candidate has mentioned is street-related issues. Yes. Uh, crime, uh, homelessness, mental health, addiction, all the stuff related from the street issue and, and, and the complex reasons behind it we can't get into. But that's yes. what is another issue right now? completely separate from that that you think is important and we should be shining a light on? Well, the, the um, division between city staff and senior staff is on my list as well. The uh, morale has never been so bad in there. My uncle used to work in the city in the 60s. The city was a great place to work. You couldn't get in there for a job, for for anything, and now people don't want to work there. They're, they're being harassed and bullied. And I've talked to uh, a union rep at the Camelot District Labor Council and he said that their hours are very sporadic, some of them, and they can't they can't live their lives like that. They have to have a family life. They have to have set uh, schedules. Um, again, in my business, uh, uh, dealing with the actual people in the city, I get to talk to them in their homes one on one. I had one gal has a special needs son. She drove from Aberdeen all the way to to the Brock Pool, and it was closed. So that comes down to staff and management again. It's, something is disconnected there that we need to fix. One more on crime and street issues. Mm -hmm. Reed Hammer Jackson, he has similar ideas. What, what differentiates you uh, and him? Well, Reed is uh, more recovery-based. They want to do the uh, treatment center. It's more of a provincial and federal issue. I'm not against it, but I think we have other issues that we need to deal in this town. You're not going to get them off the street. The stuff that they're doing, the federal, provincial government, they are trying stuff that has been done in Seattle and San Francisco, all other places, and we know it's failed. It, giving out the drugs, uh, letting them carry so many grams, um, it's increased, it's doubled the capacity. So if you keep handing them out to people, of course you're going you're gonna to raise the, the bar when it comes to uh, the many people that do that. So. Being an incumbent uh, carries an advantage. Uh, name recognition is the big one. There's there's uh, there's th three incumbents uh, r running. There's there's Arjun Singh. There's Sadie Hunter. There's Dieter Duty. So what would you say to people who believe that it's a three-person race? Um, that's what I've heard. That even uh, Councillor Lang uh, mentioned that on her thing too, and that, that they don't give Reed or myself a chance, but. I, I beg to differ. I, the support is huge out there. I have uh, QP behind me. I've had, after every interview, I've received numerous phone calls after my um, my paper interviews as well. And you got the self, message out that exactly. you were talking about. That's what I'm working for. That's yes. Right. Not done again. Again. Yes. Hey, Mike. We gave you a question for Dita Duty. You got a question for Ray? Well, you know, I'm always all about the arts, the music specifically. What can you do to help musicians of Kamloops? Help the musicians, as you know, we've had uh, Canada Day this year. Uh, we, I had two new groups that approached me. It's their first time they've ever put the groups together, uh, A Canada and uh, Lockdown. And both I've known, I've known, uh, like I say, my family's been here forever. And they asked if they could 
you know, debut on that day. And sure, I made spots for them. I'm all about the arts and the music industry, as you know, Mike. Uh, uh, support you 100% through Canada Day. And I know some of the things the city has done to the music industry is not correct. They've uh, outsourced outside of Kamloops when we have our own experts here in town that can provide the same services. So I'm not happy about that neither, and I will address that as mayor of the city. Hey, speaking of arts, what's your stance on the proposed Performing Arts Centre that is, uh, has the whole city divided every time it comes up as, a, as an idea? I guess we'll be going to a referendum anytime in the future. What's your, what's your thought on the PAC? The PAC, uh, not at this time. The, the cost is going to go up. They're saying 90 million, but with inflation and stuff, I suspect 150 million. But if we wait, won't it go up higher in the it'll future? It'll keep going. Yeah. So it'll do you want to build one eventually? Eventually, we will. Is um, it now better than later to save money? No, because uh, businesses are still suffering. We can't afford another tax increase. The business community is suffering out there. Mm -hmm. Some of us are doing okay. Our because of crime, our business is doing well. Um, but most of them, the restaurants, everybody, they're just starting to come out of the pandemic starting to get their feet back on the ground. So give them some time. You'd be, you'd be forward if it was a grant base, if there's no tax increase? If there's if it's grant based, um, if the performing arts uh, proponents can bring up some more money to the table, yes, 100%. We have a forum coming up? We have a forum on Wednesday, October 5th at the Grand Hall at yeah. Thompson Rivers University. Do you enjoy that arena? 100%, yep, it was great. I, when I did it the first time, it was a little unnerving, but uh, more comfortable this time. Second time around, I was uh, pretty well under fire with the business and doing council and campaigning. So uh, I missed the main forum and uh, questions in the paper I didn't have time to answer. But uh, like I said, the people, I went from 21, 2200 votes up to 6,600, I believe. Mm -hmm. So on a $40 spend, my support is still there. A lot of people could recognize that I needed to step back at that time. And I'm glad you know, they made the right decision. They made the right call. So I was able to get the business on solid footing. And that's what I need to do in the city, too. Our, foundation in the city is cracked and I need to build from there again. Once you build a foundation, get the right people back in there, the sky's the limit. Camelot's has always been the bridesmaid, never the bride, and I hear that a lot all the time. We're always second to do anything or get any services, so we want to change that. We need a strong leader in there that'll bring, it'll, it'll make other communities look at us and see what we're doing here, and that's my goal. Okay, those were your kind of closing thoughts. I was going to give you a chance to say anything you wanted to. Yeah, so <laughs> go ahead, go one, one more time. <laughs> anything else you want to say? Um, thank you, everyone, for their support. It's overwhelming, like I said. The phone calls uh, are coming in, the emails. Everybody wants to know who I'm aligning with. Um, as you all know, I did start a slate, and since most of the councillors are not, not uh, running now, the slate, I've talked to my people that uh, were involved in it, and we decided that it wasn't necessary anymore so that's why I backed away from the slate um, but I can tell you the three of them that were there have started their own they're calling it not a slate but I'm hearing different messages coalition coalition Giesbrick King and uh, Sharma correct yeah. and when I listen to their interviews one says they are working together other one says they're not they have their own ideas so I'm I'm a little confused myself I think they say their platform is the same but as they if they get on council and other issues arise they're independent thinkers correct yeah that uh, we'll leave that part alone at the oh, moment okay. so. yes, I think there's a crack in the uh, coalition slate over there yeah it's yes. like you know wrestling eh? you know baby faces and correct uh, yes. yeah here's the big question <laughs> yes. do you shop at New Leaf Produce Market <laughs> Do I? Yeah. No, I don't shop anywhere. My wife does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, does your wife shop in New Leaf? She does. Yeah, yeah she supports all local, and uh, yeah. She, That's good. They she's, support she's our a great show. show. New really? Leaf supports awesome. yeah, I know the great people. I know yeah. them well. And yeah. they sponsor our next segment, which is going to be with Tom Gillardy. It's called Above the Folds, and it's brought to you by New Leaf Produce Market. New Leaf Produce Market. Straw. Berries. Herman and Steve. They're best buddies, they're in cahoots with the strawberries. Newfelt makes them down in Abbey, and Julie takes them back to Cammy. Okay, Tom Gillardi, thanks for joining us today. When you think about the season ahead, what's the first thing that jumps to mind? Big year, Memorial Cup, super exciting for our organization. Number one, we need to win our division. Uh, number two, we want to we want to win the league. We want to earn our way there. And uh, number three, we, we we have to win. I mean, this is a once in a two or three decade opportunity to host the Memorial Cup, and so we've got to do everything we can to uh, to win this thing. And not only that, um, you know, it's been a, been too many years since the WHL has uh, has won the trophy. So 
Um, I think uh, I think our league really, you know, really is uh, focused on on making sure that uh, we show well this this year. We've too many uh, too many trophies in the East, and we've got to change that. It's kind of a dream scenario with Logan Stankoven. Uh, what do you make of how it's all played out with him? He's a Kamloops kid, drafted by the Blazers, the reigning CHL Player of the Year, 19-year-old season, captain of his hometown team, and you're hosting. Yeah, yeah it's funny how it's uh, funny how it's worked out, and obviously being 19, likely his last year in the league. Um, you know, yeah, it's the, we'll get the best out of Logan in a, in a Blazers jersey this year, I'm sure. Back to this season and, and to the roster, you said back in July that uh, you'd like to make a splash, but you might have to be patient. So how much change are you expecting to see with this roster before the deadline? Oh, I, I don't know, Marty. I mean, I, I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of 18 and 19 year old players that um, we'll have to see how they do. You know, so far we've got an analysis on most of them. You know, some have taken big steps, some haven't. Um, it's still early and we haven't had a team, so... You know, the team that we played through ex with exhibition really isn't our team. So um, I think we're missing eight guys currently. So that's uh, that's a that's a big difference. So we'll have to see how, how these folks progress. And, you know, to the extent we've got somebody who's in, you know, on the second or third line that uh, we need to upgrade, like we'll have to upgrade that person. So, you know, I'm hoping that the roster stays largely intact and, and, the, and the kids that, you know, got an eight-year-old are going to take a step and, uh, and be what we need them to be, uh, to be more Memorial Cup uh, uh, club. Um, you know, clearly we'll need additions. We'll need uh, we'll need to address uh, uh, some some shortfalls. You know, probably at forward, probably at every position, and on the back end, and and uh, possibly in goal. Uh, we'll see how the Euros are. Uh, they're both first year guys for us, so we'll have to uh, watch how they progress. So it. I don't know what the answer is to that. We'll, we'll definitely be adding. We've got the draft pick currency. We've got uh, we've got enough currency to be able to trade for the stuff that we think we'll need. And the amount of changes that happen are going to depend on uh, on the progress of the club this year. But you know, I think having Don Hay back in the fold gives us a real a really good chance to 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 you know to, to improve some kids uh, even more than they have been uh, improving. That's what. That's what Don's great at, especially uh, on the back end. Don has had a tremendous success uh, uh, track record, you know, uh, developing defensemen. And I think we've got some really great defensemen. And I think a few months under Don is really gonna uh, really gonna help uh, help them be in a position to uh, to be a Memorial Cup uh, champion. When it comes to roster transactions, how involved are you? I mean, in terms of conversations with Sean and the management group and directives for what the club should do to improve the roster. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, obviously involved. Um, I, I don't, I don't really know the players. And so our staff, uh, you know, it's a collaborative thing. We have uh, Tim O'Donovan, Robbie Sandland, uh, Sean Clouston and the rest of our scouts that are, you know, going to weigh in and watch. And this year we'll be a little more active watching, um, uh, watching players in the league, get a really good read on, on who's out there and who can help us. So, um, I mean, I'll have a seat at the table, but uh, it's not something that I'll I'll be driving. Um, our, our, you know, Sean's been in the league a long time. He knows what to do, and and we've got we've got you know we've got a lot of names in the around the league that are circled that uh, you know if they come available, we'll have interest. And you know, I think uh, just because we haven't done something doesn't mean we haven't been trying. There's been lots of conversations with other clubs, and you know, the timing is what it is. I mean, there's certain clubs that that. You know, that want to see how they're doing, and it's uh, it's a tough time to make a trade actually because because clubs want to see what they've got, and you know by Christmas you kind of have a pretty good idea of what you got, and uh, and the market will start to open up then between Christmas and the deadline, in terms of you know in terms of some teams that you know that at that point be facing reality who they really are, and some teams might be better than they think they are, and will be buyers not sellers, so we'll have to wait for that to play out, and and I think that works well for us too because. We need to understand where our team's at and where our kids are at and, you know, what 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds, what steps have they taken and, you know, can they move up a, can they move up a line, for instance. So uh, we need to, we, we need, uh, so I, that's why I don't think you'll see much happen for, for those reasons. We want to assess who we are and, and I think other clubs that have players that would help us are going to need to assess where they are and the timing isn't today. Okay. Okay. Um Hockey business question. You and I talked December 2020 a while ago now. You said the pandemic was terrible and devastating for the hockey club. I don't think that's um, 
big news for anybody. You said that um, it'll easily jump into seven figures of damages and bills to pay when we get going again. So how bad did it get and how are things now? Um, well, it was terrible. Um, it was terrible during you know COVID for you know better part of two seasons. Um, you know it was, uh, but you know we're obviously you know capable as an ownership group of weathering the storm. We weathered the storm, and and um, you know last year was a successful financial year, as good as we've ever had. So it's nice to bounce back with that, and and uh, you know this year we've got a good team. So. Um, you know, you tend to have a competitive team. You tend to do better, and so, you know, we're the COVID's in the in the rearview mirror. Um, you know, it happened, and uh, you know, I think last year helped us recover a lot from it. And um, you know, we're in we're in strong shape as a as a as a club, and and uh, we expect uh, you know good days ahead. Okay. Anything else you wanted to add? No, you'd have to ask me, Marty. I'm just answering questions here. <laughs> Okay, I'll go. I want to go back to the roster one more time. Assessment has to happen. But is there at this stage one position group that you see specifically that that could use an upgrade? Oh, I I, I, I would say that we're of the, of the you know three areas. If you say well, forwards, defenseman, and goal, uh, the area we're deepest in, I think, is forward. So, um, but having said that, there's there's going to be we're going to want to get better. Um, you know, on the back end, we're going to see where guys are at. You know, like, we're, you know, where's Caden Hamill at, for instance? Uh, he's a, an 05 kid, so, um, you know, how big a step has he taken? Is, is he a top four player, you know, an everyday top four player? Those are the questions I can't answer yet. Um, you know, we're going to need depth throughout the lineup. We've got two 18-year-old goalies. One is a Euro rookie in the league. You know, where's he going to be at? Uh, is Dylan Ernst going to be the starter? Uh, an everyday starter in the league, you know, and it, so these are all questions that need to be answered, and uh, and I and and uh, you know, and they will be answered, and we'll make decisions based on that. So I, I would I would think all areas are going to be looked at, and we're going to have to be enhanced, is my guess. Uh, but it all depends on on uh, on what happens. I mean, uh, um, you know, do we have four top four defensemen that are you know capable of playing the Memorial Cup today? Your guess is as good as mine right now. Okay, we appreciate the time. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. I'm here for a while. I've been with McDonald's for seven years now overall. I started when I was 14 and moved up the ladder that way. Okay, so you've been here for, for a while then. I mean, yeah. When you first got to McDonald's, how long were you planning to be here for? Um, honestly, it was just a little high school job. I was going to do this through high school, go to college. Um, I did leave to Vancouver for college for a little bit, but I did stay with McDonald's and then I came back to work for Brandy. And what has this job meant to you? It's incredible. I love being able to just have an impact on, on youth, um, the way that my fellow managers had an impact on me as a kid. That was Nick Thompson. He's the market people lead for McDonald's and Kamloops and Merritt. Part of his job to get the message out on equity, inclusion, uh, and diversity. We thank McDonald's for uh, sponsoring us. Mike, if we can get one more. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Thank you. That's Colt Meikle, number 17 for the Kamloops Broncos. He's still 17 years old. He is uh, leading the BCFC in yards receiving. Nobody can catch up to him. And, nope, and, and he was just named the uh, Offensive Player of the Week, I think, in the he league. Was, yep. He was. He had a club record 222 yards receiving in a 47-17 win last weekend against PG. Six foot four, 210 pounds. He had to get a special exemption to play last year in the league at 16 years old because Westside didn't have a senior team. That's right. They don't have one again this year. No, they don't. Again. No. So I caught up with him yesterday. Just wanted to ask him about uh, his life and football and what he sees for his future. So let's take a look at this video right now. Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. It's a school day. Are you skipping school right now? No, I have a, I have a spare block, so I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're grade 12. You're 17 years old. You're leading the conference in receiving yards. What's been clicking for you this season? Yeah, it's been a good season, especially with uh, Reed as quarterback. Because last year with the quarterback situation was not, not the best. We went through four quarterbacks, so uh, it's been great having him. Overall, last year was not a great year for the team. What's changed this year? Yeah, this year we're a lot more on it, like organizing stuff like that. We're doing lots more meetings and just getting on the ball a lot more. 
you won a BC basketball championship also in March. And uh, I was there for that after the game. It was pretty emotional. And your, your head coach said, and, but you know what? These kids believe in themselves. They put in the work. And you know what I was most impressed with? Number nine, Colton Meikle. He's a football player. He can't hit a free throw to save his life. He put in the time at the free throw line and it made a difference, right? And it just goes to show to anyone that when you put in the work, it really does pay off. That you uh, you couldn't hit a free throw for the life of you. And I, I piled on in an article and I said, you're a bricklayer. And here you are as a receiver catching balls. How can you be, you know, maybe not the best free throw shooter, but also have great hands as a football player? I don't know how that works. Free throws just aren't my thing, apparently, until that last game. But yeah, no, free throws have never been my thing. I'm not a big shooter kind of guy in basketball, but receivers seem to click. So. Back to the Broncos, as far as the, the culture goes, uh, what's the shift been like there? Yeah, in the locker rooms, it's been way different this year. They Everyone's gotten along. There's been no problems in that kind of way, and uh, and everyone wants to do better. So it's been great in that in that sense. What time's your next class? Oh, uh, it's not till one thirty. One thirty something. You'll make it back on time, eh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Broncos in general. What do you make of it? It's good to see them having a, a better year. I know every year. Your, your, uh, your columns and your, 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 your questions to some of the Broncos we've had on the show where every year they say this is going to be our year yeah. and every year they, they, they have a tough, tough year. Yeah. And it's always Okanagan, uh, so, uh, up until recently Vancouver Island and Naimo who, who are the powerhouses and the league's always been, had this imbalance. Yeah. This year, league-wide, it seems like, aside from I think West Shore is up there, um, Okanagan's way up there but it seems a little more parody yeah and uh, and not just because of prince george the the expansion team valley huskers in chilliwack they're nationally ranked top yeah. 10. so uh, it's good to see the broncos are three and four i mean they still have something to prove they beat prince george twice and vancouver island once and yes. vancouver island is at the bottom of the that's standards. right but vancouver island no one knew that coming in they've always been a very very good team and they they, they hosted and and played west shore which is a premier team very very tight they lost by five points at yeah. home so and i think the bigger thing is, I asked him about the culture, and it's been there's been things every single year almost that come up with this club that are off field mm -hmm. um, bungle shows, and I've talked about them. They've been yep. ripped, and they could have been worse for this team. Yep. It, they could have been ripped even more for what happened. But, yep. and it's a big but, so we'll give them credit here. Things seem to have turned a corner. Braden Van Van Conant, head coach, who is his brother, is the quarterback, seems to have made a, some big changes, and stability, um, stability, yep. and it's showing on the field. Mm -hmm. So they play again this weekend. Oh, also I should mention another Kamloops kid, Evan Guizo, special teams player of the week as well. There you go. So That's let's right. not two, forget about him. I saw him play, saw the game. He was uh, made the first tackle, set the tone uh, on Saturday at Hillside Stadium, which by the way, what a place to watch a game. Especially on a summer night when, it, when the sun's going down and it's still warm out and the Bronco Stomp's happening. It's a very, very good place. It's probably yeah. one of the nicest stadiums in the league, I would say. I would say in the country. That they're stadium actually, that size. They're actually going up to Prince George again this weekend, yeah. aren't they? That's, uh, and, yeah. yeah, so that's, that's also a rapid following. So this should, they should be 4-4 four and four after, this, after this weekend. They should be. They should be. They, they're going to have to be if they want to catch Langley. they, they got to catch Langley to make the playoffs. Yes. Um, but yeah, the pink and blue hues in the sky. Oh, it's nice. It was, yeah, it was yeah, nice. nice. Very good. Okay, let's wrap the show. We're nearing 270 subscribers on YouTube now. I think we got one more slide here, Bill. Uh, hundreds of thousands of views on Facebook. We see your feedback too. Actually, there's some feedback we got on, on uh, an interview last week, the Dieter Duty interview. It was from Better Kamloops, an anonymous account on Facebook. In our comments section, they said, some hot seat they put him in. Mention all supporters except the guy the first guy to sign his nomination papers, Bob Hughes, CEO of Ask Wellness. Vote him, talking about Dieter, if you want no change. I say this as I watch two separate groups of people booting up into the back alley while enjoying my food from the new U Street Eatery. Hamer Jackson, please, or Dolly Wall as a second choice. Incumbents have had their chance mm -hmm. yeah so what do you make of that criticism there we didn't we didn't mention bob hughes so i'm glad he, i'm glad they're watching the show it's good to good to, it's, it's good to know and uh, the u street food hall i had lunch there last week a new place right by red beer the best place in town to eat um good we, okay. weren't, we weren't listing off people no. who signed his nomination no i mean so. i mean yeah i mean it's not a it's not like it's a big conspiracy and it's not like he this guy just sort of found something like watergate you go on camelot.ca you click on the election button you click on the name and you see who signed their nomination papers dino bernardo signed his papers yeah dino so did we, too. is, is dieter duty going to open up a bunch of uh, <laughs> yeah. nightclubs and, nightclubs dope, and shops? dope shops <laughs> <laughs> if dieter knows bob hughes in a personal way does that disqualify him from being mayor does that make dieter more 
compassionate toward Askwell and this mission? Not necessarily. That's the whole premise behind the comment. It's that, yeah. okay, well, he's going to be soft on, on street issues and crime because, because Bob Hughes I don't signed think his so. papers. I mean, regardless of who's in, 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 in the mayor's office, Ask Wellness has service agreements with BC Housing that supersedes anything the city does. So it doesn't matter who's going to be the mayor. Ask Wellness, CMHA, Elizabeth Fry, all these agencies that help the people who need help have contracts that are out of the city's purview. Um, they're, they're chosen to manage them. Mm -hmm. The places are going to be there regardless who manages them. And the philosophy behind managing them won't change whether it's Ask Wellness, CMHA, or anyone else. Yeah. And whether Reed Hamer Jackson or Ray Dollywall or Dieter Duty or Sadie Hunter or Arjun Singh get in, nothing's going to change with respect to the social And And you and I concept. were not in cahoots with the all-knowing media and not mentioning Bob Hughes for... We're mentioning it right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and the, Mike... Last week we did our story, our very true story, and you brought up cow bellowing. I, and I thought you were just yes. part of the story, you know, having some fun. But did you actually do a study on cow bellowing and how to let them hear you if you're driving past the, the cows? The Doppler effect. Absolutely. absolutely. As a sound engineer, the Doppler effect is something that changes. And I thought about it and I thought, why human and bovine communication isn't doing so well, it's because they can't understand what we're trying to bellow to them because we're driving past the highway and it's just monotone, it's just marr, right? I'm still not sure if you're being serious right no, now. Because, you, because, no, because, no, I, I, I Mike, do, no, what do you Mike's, try and say to the cows when you drive by them? When you're bellowing, what are you trying to say to them? Well, it's, it's, it's inference of, of, hey, I understand you, I see you, <laughs> and I, I appreciate I acknowledge you. Can I have your skin for my next you. convention? I appreciate you on a plate. But you know, uh, Mike's study is not, is not unprecedented. Gary Larson, he's done tons of studies on bovine and human interaction. Is that a real person? Absolutely. Are you guys just yes. no? Gary Larson, Gary Larson he's come on. Gary everyone knows Larson. about his, his Gary studies. Larson. Gary Larson has done tons of studies on on bovine and human inter. Uh, the moon master of the world. Look Gary him up, Larson. Gary Larson. Everybody knows that. Absolutely. Don't tell him who he is. I, and I'm a proud third generation bellower. <laughs> That's right. That's true. He sent me these like studies that he did with well, his name on them and like the, these graphs of mood noises well, yeah. that he made. Well, I can't you believe you don't know who yourself, Gary Larson you is. Can just follow those. Yeah. And... I, get, I got a couple of books on Gary Larson. Uh, I should give to him so he can take a look. It's, it's all it's all like graphic novel stuff. It's good. It is. It's, yeah. I, I actually was. Uh, that's what I studied in yeah. high school. What well, uh, under? Yeah. Well, he was the he was the guy. He was the guy who <laughs> pioneered the bovine human interpersonal relationship studies. I think that's probably where I got that. And he does it with illustrations too. Very good. Amazing. Now, do we want to deal with Jennifer Rouse somehow after this? Yeah, or? we should because uh, it's it's election related. Okay, so in in today's newspaper, September twenty first, on page six and seven, and online at canvasthisweek.com, we have a story about a school trustee candidate named Jennifer Rouse. And why is it interesting? It's because her her, her beliefs are a little bit wacky, and uh, and and she and she, uh, she she refuses to talk to the media because she thinks the media is out to get her. Uh, she believes. Um, uh, anyway, she's got some interesting beliefs regarding uh, vaccination, regarding teaching sex education in schools, about wanting to ban some books in schools. Um, read the story. She it's wanted really interesting. segregated schools for the masked and unmasked. Yeah. She um, uh, kind of approved that on Facebook anyway. Wants to ban certain books from school libraries, sharing content on Facebook, claiming Satan invented all genders other than male and female. Yes, she believes that Satan. Well, she she shared a post. That she shared said a post. That, so that obviously that. it infers that she believes that. So it's advocating. Interesting, interesting, that, uh, interesting candidate. She's from my hometown of Abbotsford, the buckle of the Bible Belt. She moved here a year ago. She lives in Tobiano with her family. Uh, so so really, she could be running for the rural seat, which is uh, Kara McAlvey's. She's being acclaimed. But she's running for one of five city seats because two of her children mm -hmm. attend public school. Read more about that on our website. If you want to, Sean Brady wrote the story. He's one of our great reporters that are covering the election, along with Wallace, Patesio, maybe myself at some point. You're out doing interviews with, uh, with people and writing columns. So mm -hmm. check our website out. We have the forum coming up. We have next week in the hot seat. Is it Arjun or Sadie next week? I think it's Arjun and then it's Sadie, if, if I remember correctly, yes. Okay, um, that's it for us. Actually, thanks to Herman Hothi again. He'll be back in uh, center stage next week. We thank Gord and uh, Gord Stevens right here. No, oh, Herman, you've had your time. It's Gord's, Gord's giving back program. Oh. Herman's just, he's rowdy today. And uh, yeah, that's it for Greg the Engineer, for Magic Mike, for Bill, for Chris Folds, the cowbell, or for Gary Larson. We'll see you last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>